Hi there, welcome to the Visual ModFlow Flex video training series. My name is Braden McNeil and I'm the lead software trainer here at Waterloo Hydrogeologic. In this video, I'll discuss the first steps in the numerical modeling workflow, defining modeling objectives and creating a grid. After creating a new numerical modeling project, you should be on the Define Modeling Objectives workflow step. Defining modeling objectives entails selecting the desired flow and transport simulation options. The purpose of this step is to develop the necessary inputs required to build the model based on your understanding of the relevant physical processes present within the study area. There are several flow conditions available for groundwater modeling, including constant and variable density saturated flow, variably saturated flow, and soil vapor flow. For the variably saturated and soil vapor flow options, there are also options for flow in the unsaturated zone, including Van Genuchten, Brooks Corey, and the UZF or unsaturated zone flow package. You'll also define transport objectives during, during the Define Modeling Objectives step. When you select the Transport Active checkbox at the top of the screen, additional options will be uh, available for the retardation and reaction models which will be applied to your groundwater model. If transport is active in your simulation, then you may have to specify the relevant reaction and retardation parameters within the Species Parameters and Model Parameters tabs. You'll have to de define parameters such as distribution and diffusion coefficients, although the overall selection of parameters that you'll have to define will be based on the selection of retardation and reaction models. The selected combination of flow and transport options will narrow the list of available flow and transport engines and generate the associated input variables, including units and default values. You'll be able to choose between the available engines at a later step to determine which engines will actually be used when you run your model. On the left side of the Define Modeling Objectives window, you'll also be able to define a model start date. This model start date should coincide with the start time of your simulation. All ModFlow input files have relative time variables, and so all the data in the project will be, will be referenced according to the model start date. Also, if you have any data that will be imported into the project that contains time and as a relative variable, it will also be referenced according to this model start date. Finally, you'll have to specify default flow and transport parameters at this stage. These values are used by Visual ModFlow Flex to populate the applicable arrays for flow and transport models when you arrive at the Define Properties step. You'll be able to introduce additional heterogeneity into these property values uh, whenever you reach the Define Properties workflow step. Once the modeling objectives have been defined, you can proceed to importing or creating a new grid. Click on the blue arrow button above the workflow navigator to proceed to this step. The Import Model option is available for importing existing USGS ModFlow 2000 or 2005 projects, as well as Visual ModFlow Classic projects. For more information on importing projects, please see our video on the topic. The Create Grid option is available for new projects. Clicking on this button will bring you to the Create Grid Workflow step. At this step you can define the horizontal grid, including the size of the cells and the overall extents of the model domain. You'll also be able to define the vertical grid, including the number of layers and what their elevations will be, and whether or not any rotation will be applied to your grid. The Grid Size fields allow you to specify the number and size of the grid cells, while the Grid Extents fields allow you to specify the overall size of the model. Please note that these fields are dynamically linked, so if you make any changes to the grid extents, you should see a corresponding change to the cell heights and cell widths, and vice versa. Several tools are available at this stage to help you design your model grid. It's possible to, find, to define the grid extents based on a bounding polygon data object if one is available. If you select the option to calculate extents from a polygon object, You'll then be able to select a polygon data object from the data tree and load it into the grid preview using this blue arrow just underneath the Calculate Extents from a Polygon Object button. When you do that, the grid extents will automatically be updated to match the minimum and maximum X and Y values contained within the polygon data file. It's also possible to load in other data files into the grid preview window to help you manually update your grid extents. If you have any site maps or polygon data objects that you'd like to load into the grid preview window, simply select them from the data tree and then click on the Add Data Object button next to the grid preview. That will load in the site map or the polygon data object that you've selected 
and you can then update your grid extents accordingly to ensure that you're covering the, the desired area. With respect to vertical discretization, simply use the number of layers field to increase or decrease the number of model layers. For simple box models, you can specify layer elevations in the elevation column. You can simply type values in there. It's also possible to specify layer elevations using surface data objects. In that case, simply click the Use Surface uh, checkbox. You can then select a surface data object from the data tree and once again load it in for the selected layer using the blue arrow button. The elevations for that layer should then be automatically updated to reflect the elevations of the surface file. Finally, a grid rotation can be applied at this stage. In finite difference models, groundwater flow is calculated at interconnected cell faces which only occur in the x, y, and z directions. As such, rotating the grid allows you to model groundwater flows that are aligned with significant features within the model domain that may control the direction of groundwater flow, such as large surface water bodies, horizontal anisotropy, faults, or other hydrogeologic features. When you're satisfied with the formation of your grid, simply click the Create Grid button. This will generate the associated input files within the Model Explorer, and it will also make subsequent workflow steps available. Please note that the grid creation step may take a minute or two. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Visual Modflow Flex training videos. The next video in the series will discuss additional grid operations such as grid and layer refinement and the selection of inactive model cells. For additional training resources, including user manuals and free tutorials, please visit the VMod Flex support page on our website. A link is provided in the video description.